out of their opponents, and most importantly, themselves. Yesterday's doubleheader sweep of the double race showcased a team that is finding ways to win and not look back. All the little things were in place, and every player has stepped in and helped out. Today, the Sox look to close out this homestand on a positive note. It's the double race and the kids from the south side coming up next on WGN. We are coming to you from Comiskey Park, where this afternoon, WGN Sports presents exciting Chicago White Sox baseball. It's Big Hurt Frank Thomas and the White Sox as they host Jose Canseco and the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Hi, everybody. Welcome to beautiful Comiskey Park. With Tom Pachoric, I'm Ken Harrell. Since we get set to bring you the finale of this three-game set, as you know, the Sox won both ends of that doubleheader yesterday. In fact, the Sox have won eight out of their last nine. They stand 6-1 and one on his homestand and sending Mike Sorotka to the hill today, Wimpy. Yes, that's right, Hawk. And Mike Sorotka coming off of a five-hit shutout against the Detroit Tigers, and that was his first major league shutout. So looking for great things for Sorotka this afternoon. Now, Wilson Alvarez, former White Sox pitcher, was 2-0 and last year against the Sox. 0-6-1 earned run average. So he pitched very well against the White Sox, but the Sox did not play well against left-handed pitching last year. This year, 6-0 and against left-handed starters. All right, sit back, relax, and strap it down. Exciting Chicago White Sox baseball coming away next on WGN. Chicago White Sox baseball on WGN is brought to you by Miller Lite, the great taste of a true Pilsner beer. Ford, cars built to last, trucks built Ford tough. Visit your local Ford store today. Coca-Cola, always a home run, always Coca-Cola. Toyota, every day belongs to you. Make it count, Toyota every day. New Discover Platinum, now more than ever, it pays to discover Platinum. Aflac, insuring over 40 million people worldwide. And by Southwest Airlines, offering low fares and frequent flights. Southwest Airlines, the official airline of WGN Sports. Back at Comiskey Park where the Sox have just taken the field, but in the meantime, we have a young 24-year-old right-hander, John Snyder, down in that dugout, who, John, just, just another exceptional performance yesterday. Thanks, fellas. You're 3-1 and one on the season, and you seem to be just in a terrific rhythm. Yeah, I'm able to throw a lot of strikes, get ahead in the count with fastball, and uh, keep my balance and breaking stuff. Well, you had five strikeouts yesterday, just dominated the double-A hitters. And one thing about, we always talk about when John pitches, he'll get it, throw it, and he'll pitch inside. That's got to be a big thing, pitching inside and setting up some room for you on the outside corner. Yeah, exactly. OB gave me a, a good example last year in Boston. He said, if you're going to get crushed, you're going to do it fast. If you're going to do well, you're going to do it fast. So I just uh, stuck with that uh, theory. Well, John, continued success, big guy. Nice going, and thanks for the time. Thanks. Take care, guys. All right, John Snyder. And right now, let's get to the starting lineups for today's ball game. All right, here's Larry Rothschild's lineup for the Devil Rays. Leading off in center field, Randy Wynn. Batting second in left field, Quentin McCracken. Danny Clyburn is the DH. He'll hit third. Cleanup man, first baseman, Freddie McGriff. John Flaherty is behind the plate in the fifth spot, followed by third baseman, Wade Boggs. Bobby Smith plays second, hits seventh. Hitting eighth in right field is Dave Martinez. And bringing up the rear at shortstop, David Lamb. Here's the Sox on defense. Jeff Abbott in left field. Darren Jackson gets the start in center with Mags Ordonez in right. Greg Norton is at third base. Craig Wilson plays shortstop. Ray Durham at second. And Paul Canerco is at first with Frank Thomas doing the DHing. Mark Johnson is behind the plate. Mike Sorotka on the hill. Mike, 27-year-old left-hander who now lives in Phoenix, is 1-2, and 3-7-2 ERA and three starts. One complete game. That a shutout his last time up. Giving up 19 hits in the same number of innings. Three homers. Six walks and 12 strikeouts. He is 1-0 career against Tampa Bay. Here's the umpires. Larry Young at home plate. Tim Cheetah at first. Rick Reed at second base. And Fielding Culbreth is the third base umpire. Beautiful day for baseball. We are just about ready. You see it's 52 degrees. Perfect. Clear and cool. The forecast. Here's the Huckaroo. All right, Wimpy, thank you, and once again, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Chicago White Sox baseball right here over WGN Sports, finale of this three-game set, and this homestand. As we mentioned, Sox have taken the first two, that doubleheader yesterday, and they are 6-1 and one on this homestand. 
Center fielder Randy Wynn, switch hitter, will lead it off. One of three switch hitters in this Tampa Bay lineup. Randy at 289, a homer. He's driven in six, takes first pitch up high. Wynn is two for nine in the series. Sox won those games yesterday by scores of 10 to 7 and 9 to 1. Fouls that one down at the plate. That evens accounted one. Here at Comiskey Park, 347 down the lines, 375 in the gaps, and 400 straight away center field. So the Devil Rays, who earlier had a six game winning streak, have now lost four in a row. Coming in at 11 and 11. That ball hit high in the center field. Darren Jackson's back. He's right at the track. And that's out number one. Oh, looks like it's really carrying. Well, he was out in front of a changeup right there and hit it to the track at right center. It's Usually right. the wind, if you see the flags blowing from left to right, that means the ball's going to be carrying good to left and vice versa. The swirling winds here at Comiskey Park. Here's the left fielder, Quentin McCracken, hitting at 246, a homer. He's driven in eight. One for seven in that double header. Lifetime against Sorotka. He's faced him four times, and he's drawn the collar as he takes a fastball strike. Curveball high off the plate. The opposition this year and three starts against the Sox Southpaw hitting at 257. As Wimpy told you, last time out, shut out the Tigers five to nothing for his first major league shutout. Norton at the cut of the grass, that pitch fouled away. And he's on top. Nothing in two. Check that one and two to Quentin McCracken. Well, you just heard from John Snyder, there's not a faster worker in all of baseball. That young man will get it, throw it. As most of the Sox pitchers will. They are young, they're talented, they work quick, and they're not afraid of the bat. Ground ball right side. Ray Durham is there, a little backhand. Chucks it up, throws him out, two gone. That'll bring up the DH, Danny Kleinburn. Danny, 25 years old. 0 for 4 in the first game came in. The pinch hit for Canseco in the sixth inning of game two. He doubled, and then he singled in the eighth, so he's two for six in this series. There's a strike on the corner. Outfield playing him slightly to pull. Good hook. Now you got two spots right here, Wimperu. You got hard up. Are soft down. That's right. A lot of area to, to pitch to right here for Sorotka. Just off the outside corner. Nice effort. Tried to backdoor him with a curveball. Well, what we saw in that doubleheader yesterday, this uh, almost to a man, they were chasing that fastball up out of the strike zone. Got a lot of outs that way yesterday. Ooh. Got him on the inside corner. He'll grab some bench. So a one, two, three inning for Mike and after a half inning of play. It's a double raise, nothing, and the good guy is coming up. Mike Sorotka had a 1 2 3 top half of the first inning. And here is the lineup that Wilson Alvarez will be facing. Leading off at second, Ray Durham. Batting second at shortstop, Craig Wilson. Frank Thomas is the DH. He'll hit third. Cleanup man, red hot, Maglio Ordonez in right field. Greg Norton is at third in the fifth position. Followed by center fielder Jaron Jackson. Paul Canerco plays first and will hit seventh. Batting eighth in left field, Jeff Abbott. And bringing up the rear behind the plate, Mark Johnson. Here's the Tampa Bay defense. McCracken, Wynn, and Martinez in the outfield. Box, Lamb, Smith, and McGriff are the infielders. John Flaherty behind the plate. And Wilson Alvarez. Boy, Wilson already 29 years old. I remember when he was a baby. 0 oh, and 1, an 8.64 earned run average and two starts. One was pretty good. He was on the disabled list for a while. Problem with his shoulder. And he is 2 and 0 oh against the White Sox. Look at the walk total. My goodness, that must be contagious over there. Tampa Bay just walking everybody this season. Well, they had 19 walks they issued in that doubleheader yesterday. 
And before we show you our picks to click, you at home select yours as Ray Durham stands in, hitting at 329, five homers. He's driven in 13, takes first pitch fastball strike. Ray, three for eight in that twin bill with a homer, and he drove in five. Now feels straight up. There's a fastball strike on the outside corner, says Young, and very quickly to count nothing in two. We're going to move a little further out there now. Ray has faced Alvarez six times. He has one hit. Ray Durham has been playing some baseball. He has been getting on base, taking a lot of walks, hitting home runs. It's jammed right there. Get out of here. Oh boy. Trying to come back, it will. As Freddie McGriff makes a catch in foul ground, and that's out number one. And right now, let's check out our picks to click this afternoon. Bill Moore, Skip Ellison, and the crew, I'm with Craig Wilson. And Susan Evans, for all the ladies out there, look at this. We got a new leader. Went with Ray Durham. Pee Wee, I mean, Wimpy, went with Aaron Jackson. And my crew and I are going to go with Jeff Apple. Craig Wilson, one for nine on the season, takes ball one. He takes ball two. Mike Caruso getting the day off against the left-hander. Caruso has been playing well as Durham. So the Sox been getting good defense, good offense, a lot of good plays up the middle. One thing we did not talk to John Snyder about earlier too was the fact Brooke Fordyce. Oh, what a job he's been doing behind the plate. Oh, terrific. Excellent defense and center, so that's strong up the middle. Alvarez appears to have a good fastball. Three and one to count. In those two victories against the Sox last year, he stayed away from the changeup for the most part. That's down low ball four. Well, the one out walk to Craig Wilson. And here comes Big Frank. Frank hitting a smooth 390, three homers. He's driven in 14. Two for six yesterday with a homer. But he's had problems against Alvarez. Faced him six times, he's drawn the collar. Just a decent lead by Wilson. There's a strike on the inside corner that evens the count of one and on deck. The men had quite an afternoon yesterday. Maglio Ordonez. A Hawker S type doubleheader. He's getting there. A couple of more years of experience. That's out of play. So Alvarez just featuring nothing but gas right here to the big hurt. And he's on top one and two. Well, Frank was really trying to fight off that inside fastball yesterday. You know, he got the hang and breaking ball that he hit out of the ballpark naturally, but they were pounding him inside. He was not getting the hit of the bat out front. Now you're getting streaks up there. Meanwhile, he gets in some streaks where he's just trying to fight off the inside fastball. He's still hitting 390. That's right. Isn't that amazing? other guys up there, mere mortals, they're trying to fight off that inside fastball, and they're hitting probably 210. Oh, a good jump right there by Wilson. Meanwhile, it's popped up. Dave Martinez, he's there. He'll make the catch. Craig Wilson had that base stolen. So here is Mags. Four for nine yesterday, three homers, and he hit a grand slam as first major leaguer. 
Tony Sanders, the change up. And he got a fastball the next time up. Drove it straight away center field. Mags one for five lifetime against Alvarez. Pretty good. 19 ribbies in 17 ball games. As there's a strike on the outside corner. Yeah, that'll pencil out real good at the end of the season. What would that add up to, Pee Wee? I don't know. 160, 178, 179. <laughs> Ooh, good hook. First one he's thrown. No score, bottom of the first inning, if you're just joining us. Sox will conclude this game and this homestand. And we'll head out for Edison Field. Four-game series against the Halos and finish it up with three at Camden Yards against Baltimore. Fighting off that fastball. Well, that was some kind of game last night between the Blue Jays and the Angels. The Angels were leading that game 10 to nothing. Yeah. Toronto came back to tie it up. My God. Blue Big Mo stupid. got him. Uh. Well, he had a bullet out of there off Graham Lloyd. Two run homer. Change up. They force Wilson. That'll retire the side. Nothing across. After one, no score. As you peruse our Southwest Airlines tail of the tape, no score, just in the top of the second inning. Fred McGriff will lead it off against Mike Sorotka. Ready hitting at 254 homers. He's driven in 11. Two for four yesterday with a big three run homer. Coming off Jimmy Parquet. Outfield playing him around to the left. As he rips that fastball right back through the middle. So the leadoff single. And you can cancel a postgame show. That'll bring up the catcher, John, John Flaherty. Flaherty. Flaherty at 281, a couple of homers. He's driven in 11. One for four yesterday. Mike DeFelice caught game two. He was two for four with a couple of doubles and an RBI. Outfield straight away. Short lead by McGriff. Checking the slate of action around the National League. Cubs are taking on the fish down in Florida. Arizona at Houston. St. Louis. They're hosting the Rockies. Rockies leading 6 to nothing. Bottom of the second inning. San Diego leading the Mets 4 nothing. Bottom of the second at Shea. Dodgers scored two in the top of the first at Milwaukee. Cubs leading the fish 2 0, top of the fifth at Pro Player Stadium. Diamondbacks trailing Houston 2 1, bottom of the third at the Dome. Of course, so there's a lot of scoring early going on over in the National League. Jammed and popped him up. DJ. Jackson's there. One go. And a reminder, all season long, Lemon Chill saves. Lemon Chill will make a donation to White Sox charities each time a White Sox pitcher records a save. Lemon Chill. I love Lemon Chill. Oh, they're good. This is available at Comiskey Park and your local grocer. Here's the 40-year-old veteran, Wade Boggs. 861 hits away from 3,000. It was two for four yesterday. Outfield, well around to the left. They have not posted the slate of action in the American League on the scoreboard out there. Maybe having a problem. 
A mechanical. One and one to count. Other games that will show Detroit at Seattle, Cleveland at Oakland, Baltimore hosts Kansas City. The Yankees are down at the ballpark in Arlington. And Jim Fergosi's Blue Jays at Anaheim. I'll tell you that, that Toronto ball club. That's a good looking ball club. Yeah, it is. That's a young team as there's a call. Tex Wayne strike and the count one and two. Well, you talk to the scouts around the league and they'll tell you they got the best arms. Yeah, I think they've got the best arms in this league. A lot of hard throwers and they've got a lot of talented guys in their lineup too. It's an interesting team to contend with. A one two. Just off the corner. Yeah, you know, one of your favorite players from a couple of years ago, Sean Green. You predicted he was going to be a, a really a sensational player, and he is fulfilling that this year. Boy, what a year! He had a great year last year. It looks like he's even getting better. He can hit. Yeah. That young man had a chance to be an outstanding player. I think the key to that ball club, though, obviously they have to pitch if they're going to make a run for the division title and/or the wild card spot, which I think they can. They can get. Yes. But I think the key to that ball club is the shortstop. Gonzalez, yeah. He's got to he's got to keep growing. He's got a chance to be an outstanding player if he can keep growing. As the count goes full. Yeah, ironically, we were just talking about him before the game with some of the scouts, and they were saying that he's getting much better offensively. He's always was a good defensive player, but he always pulled off the ball, didn't hit right. the ball to right field. Right now he's really coming into his own as an offensive player, too, and he's still young. He had a two run homer last night off Shiggy. Shigatoshi. Oh, uh, no one hit Shiggy. Yeah, he got it. He got wow. Hasegawa. Ooh. Stayed right on him. Drove it right over that left center field fence. But if he has a good year, he can be a big, big key to the Blue Jay success. And there's no manager in baseball that handles a pitching staff better than Fergosi. Yeah, he's a good fit over there. There goes the runner. That ball into left field. Jeff Abbott came in. Now drifts back. Jeff's there. Oh. <laughs> Two gone. Now there you see the Blue Jays a game and a half back of the Yankees. Oh, by Boston. Tampa Bay. Wow. Orioles five and fifteen. Lord and Lord. Bobby Smith, the second baseman, stands in. Bobby hitting at 146, a couple of homers. He's driven in three. Hit a homer yesterday. We had a bullet out of here. I mean, a linea, frozen rope right over that center field fence. Yeah. And looking at Bobby Smith, he, I mean, we were talking about him yesterday. He wants that ball out over the plate. You can get that fastball in on him. You'd be wise to do it because he, he showed us some pretty big power right up the middle there. Curve ball, a good one. Didn't get it. And the count one and zero. Oh. Fouls that one away. Might be just 24 years old. Of course, the Devil Rays, they're missing a key component in their ball club. Miguel Cairo, who's just a terrific looking young second baseman. There was the breaking ball he got up, and Bobby Smith just hammered it right back through the middle. So, two on, two out. And here comes the veteran Dave Martinez. And there you see Soraka gave it an effort. Yeah, Bobby Smith. I don't know. He's got some talent. He's young. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. He looks like sometimes he looks real bad at the plate, and other times, boy, when he hits it, that ball really jumps off his bat. You mean you never look bad at the plate? Always. But the ball never jumped off my bat either. Dave Martinez off to a good start at 279. A couple of homers. He's driven in 13. 0 for 4 yesterday. 
Mark Johnson wants to go out and have a little confab with Sorotkin. I tell you, when you're 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 years old, it's easy to look bad at the plate against Major League pitching. You're 34, 35, <laughs> 36. Oh. He gets fisted and a base hit in the right field. Come on, Mags. Come on, Mags. Throw. Not a good throw by Ardonia's right there as McGriff's going to score, and Tampa Bay takes a quick one to nothing lead. RBI number 14 for Dave Martinez. Boy, he just hit that ball in a perfect spot. And Ordonez had to run a long way to get to this one because it wasn't hit hard. It was off the fist, as Hawk mentioned. And because of the throw way off line that eliminated any chance of getting McGriff, the two runners advance another base. So two more guys in scoring position for David Lamb, who homered yesterday in the first game. His first major league homer. Switch hitting infielder at shortstop today for Kevin Stocker. David just 23. Run right on three hits for Tampa Bay. There's a rocket right to Norton. He'll make that play a hang with him for David Lamb, but Devil Rays get on the board after an inning and a half. They lead it one zip. <laughs> Willie Alvarez has himself a one to nothing lead as we get set to go to the bottom of the second inning. It'll be Norton, Jackson, and Canerco. Wilson in his career has won 77 times. He has lost 69. First pitch fastball strike. But Greg, he really had a good eye yesterday. Five walks. That bodes well. Yeah. yeah. It tells you he's seen the ball pretty well. He's got exactly. three hits. Getting good counts to hit in. It's the name of the game. When you're taking your walks, you're going to have good counts. Not just in that particular at bat. Watch Look out. out. Oh, he got drill right there. The last thing Alvarez wanted to do was hit the leadoff, man. Oh, absolutely. Nowhere to run on this one. Trying to go the fastball inside and oh, right on the elbow. Right underneath the armpit. Oh. Is that where it hit him? Didn't get him anywhere. Well, I'm glad. I don't know. It got him pretty good. Well, I hope it got him where you said. I thought it was elbow at first. That's scary right there. That 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 really hurts. That funny bone. But you don't think the armpit hurts? I don't know. I think I'd rather play with that than an elbow. <laughs> it's Darren Jackson hitting at 406 a couple of homers he's driven in four and as funny as it may sound hitting at 406 if there's anybody on this ball club that's hit into hard luck this year it's been DJ yeah he's been hanging out nothing but ropes except for the last two at bats yesterday almost every time he goes to the plate he's hanging some hemp hit the ball real hard and he matches up good against Alvarez, the good fastball hitter against the primarily a fastball pitcher. That's why I picked him. Joe Posbeck, my other team member today. Of course, if we win, I take credit. If we lose, it's his fault. As Wimpy, we wouldn't have it any other way. That's Absolutely. just the kind of guy you are. I'm with him, winner tie. Change up out in front. Can they turn it? 
Close play at first, but they do turn it. Lamb to Bobby Smith. So quickly two gone. And a reminder, individual tickets for all 1999 White Sox home games, well, they're on sale now. Right here at the Comiskey Park box office. Ticketmaster ticket centers, including Dominic's, Carson's, and Tower Records by dialing 312831 Sox or online at Ticketmaster.com. So I imagine that's your partner's fault right there. Absolutely. Well, he didn't. I wasn't counting on him throwing a changeup. Actually, that was a pretty good pitch to hit. He just got him out front. Paul Canerco. All scuffling. One for eight yesterday. Another fastball. When Wilson Alvarez is going to make you beat him on his fastball, you got your work cut out. You're you. darn right you do. When he was over here, it was amazing how many times he got beat ah. on straight changes. And curveballs. And you're talking about his by far his second and third worst pitch. There's a breaking ball. Those straight changes of his, I mean, he lost Ooh. a lot of ball games. Well, he lost a lot bad pitch selection. Because he was throwing up to the seven, eighth, and ninth place hitters in the lineup. And that's the reason they're hitting up there, because they can't hit his fastball. And uh, and rolling curveballs, not not a yacker. If he's going to throw his curveball in situations with the game on the line, he's got to bring it. Well, he threw a lot of getting me over breaking pitches, and those are the ones he got hammered on. Yeah, and his changeup. Tell you what, when he matched up with that fastball, he was awfully tough against anybody in the lineup. Well, the one thing Alvarez, when he was in that Sox uniform, if you beat him on a changeup, he kept throwing it. If you beat him on a curveball, he'd keep throwing that. You heard him on a fastball. He just went away from that. Yeah. He just, he, I mean, he just abandoned his fastball. If somebody would turn him around. I mean, all of a sudden, you could just book it. Here comes the changes and the hooks. Yeah. Oh, we can see first pitch change up, second pitch curve. Remember? Yep. I mean. And he's 0-2. Now he minimizes his fastball. Yeah. Here's the 1-2. Good fastball from Alvarez. Good hack by Canerco. Most of the time pitchers have to use if you can make them as a catcher or as a manager or pitching coach if you can you can get them out there on that mound and make their second best pitch and out pitch. Now you got yourself something working. But if you do everything in the world to minimize your best pitch which in his case is a fastball. 2-0-3-1, all it does is just shorten that fastball up. Two out, the 2-2 pitch. Breaking ball, he knocks down, got plenty of time. Canerco's no racehorse. And it'll do it, nothing across. We'll go to the third, Alvarez leads it, 1-0. One nothing bad guys here in the top of the third inning. Ladies day. Here at the old ballpark. Randy Wynn will lead it off. Fly to his counterpart. Darren Jackson. Okay. Somebody's got to hurry right here. Throw it away. Mags gets to it so that'll be a hit. And an arrow. Beautiful butt by Randy Wynn. Yeah, with his speed, really didn't have much of a chance on this one. Boy, he just the angle of the bat right down the first baseline. Didn't give it away, didn't go too quickly. Norton comes on. The off balance throw is way up the line. No chance for Canerco, so Wynn scoots in the second base, and it's Quentin McCracken's job right now to get him the third for Danny Clyburn. McCracken's first at bat. He grounded to second base. When 28 years old out of Duke University. Uh oh, watch out. There he goes. Put it on. Nope. 
Yes, yeah, she came off the bag. So a sliding miscue by Randy Wynn. And a big out. Wow, Norton stayed right with him. Another example, the head first slide failing. <laughs> Good pitch to go on, too. Nobody messing with him at second base. Johnson throwing around the right-handed hitter. Throws a little bit offline. Watch it right here. Oh, Nelly. They got him. Big out. Norton stayed right with him. And there's a look at, look at the play by Norton. Norton, you're, you're the, the greatest. greatest. Mercy. <laughs> Man, that ball was hammered. And Norton playing in on the grass. The only thing he could do is dive and poof, there it is. <laughs> wow. Danny Clyburn takes the curveball and misses. Struck out his first trip. Oh, what a reaction play by Norton. He is fun to watch. Oh, yeah. He's going to do something every ball game as that fastball foul back. That's going to make you smile. Yeah. And, of course, who was one of our all-time favorites at that? Well, Mike Heath. That's was, it. He is the... Very few in his Mikey's league. Curveball. Norm Cash was the same way. Former great Tiger first baseman. Every ball game, he was going to do something to make you laugh. Storm and Norm. God rest his soul. He was yep. a good man. Here's the one, two. Off the end of the bat. Craig Wilson sucks that one up. Guns him down. And that'll do it. We'll go to the bottom of the third, trailing Tampa Bay by one. What a play by Greg Norton. Let's go. <laughs> That's it. That's the synonym. <laughs> One nothing bad guys. Jeff Abbott chops it down the third baseline. That's a foul ball. It'll be Abbott, Johnson, and back to the top of the order and Ray Durham. Abbott three for six yesterday with three RBIs in that double header. So hopefully, coming out of that funk that he has been in. So you got one of Mags's bat? I don't blame him. I, don't I think everybody on our ball club maybe should go get one of Mags's bats. I think that's a great idea. There's the shot. Yes. Right back to the middle. So you can cancel a post game show. Well, we did one with Wilson a few years ago. Baltimore. Yeah, boy, did he have stuff that day. Great fastball overpowering. That breaking ball of his was really hard and nasty. Mark Johnson. Three for three yesterday. Boy, he had quite, quite an afternoon in the first game. Takes that pitch down low. In fact, in the third inning of the first game yesterday, he doubled to start off that four-run third. He singled to start off the two-run fourth, and he walked to start off the two-run seventh. Boggs at the cut of the grass at third outfield around to the left. They got him caught. Now Flaherty's going to make the right move, just go right at him, give it to McGriff. And Bobby Smith will run him down. So a miscue somewhere. Somebody did not break that code. Yeah, apparently Abbott thought the hit and run was on and Mark Johnson thought the bunt was on. That could have been a running bunt, you know. We haven't seen one of those in about 20 years, so I would doubt that that'd be the <laughs> case. Too. How long has it been? Long time. Now this isn't textbook, but they do did get it to the fast guy. Bobby Smith puts a tag on him. 
Yeah, Flaherty was just a little hesitant there rather than just going straight at him. Fouls that fastball back. And the count one and two. We mentioned the Sox will head on out to Anaheim after this ball game. Tomorrow it'll be Jamie Navarro against Steve Sparks. And we'll have that game for you right here over WGN Sports. That's down low. On Saturday, James Baldwin against Chuck Finley, the Southpaw. And we'll also have that game for you right here over WGN. On Sunday, Parquet against Olivares. Then on Monday, Snyder against Belcher. And we'll have that game for you. So three out of the four from Anaheim right here. He just blew him away. Good location. And right now, let's check out our peps at AC. White Sox schedule of upcoming games. Three out of the four. Peps at AC Chewables, they're good. I'll tell you what. They work. <laughs> Man, I don't go on the golf course without them. Ray Durham takes a strike. Curve ball. That evens accounted one. I love Peps at AC. No. Nope. Two and one to count. Turn him around, right? Ooh. Fastball. High to right field. Dave Martinez. We'll make that catch. That'll retire the side. We'll go to the four still trailing by one. Fred McGriff gets set to lead off the top of the fourth inning. As Tampa Bay scored that second inning tally. And here's a man who scored it. He singled. That curveball misses. Thirty five year old veteran. Fred McGriff. We mentioned he got a fastball yesterday from Parquet and lit him up. Three and zero the count. Griff well off that plate. He's hacking three and zero. Oh. That's all right. It wasn't a get me over. He had something on it. And McGriff turned it loose. Now you're going to swing 3 0. That's the kind of cut you want to take. He was just underneath that one. Ball hit hard. Durham. Six. One gone. And right now, let's check out our Aflac trivia question this afternoon. Number six, John Who holds the major league record for home runs in a single week? Don Mattingly. Sammy Sosa. That's fair ball. Look at Norton. Guns. Throws off the mark. That'll be a base hit for Flaherty. Good try by Norton. He's in foul ground when he comes up with it. He should have stayed on his knees. Yeah. yeah. That was going to be very, very tough to make an accurate throw from that position that he was in. Hey, he, can, he can make some picks down. Oh, yeah. Here's Boggs. Lied to Jeff Abbott. Short lead by Flaherty. 
The pitch down low. Cubs now leading the fish 3-0. They're hitting in the top of the sixth inning. Top of the sixth at Houston, 2-1 Astros over the D-Bikes. Matt Williams says it is eighth homer of the year. Two and zero the count. Rockies still shutting out St. Louis six to nothing. Game now in the top of the fifth in the heart of Mid America. Bottom of the fourth in New York. Four two Padres. And the Dodgers leading Milwaukee two to one. Top of the third at County Stadium. Three balls, no strikes. Pours that one over. Sox trying to make it a 7 1 homestand. And pick up their ninth victory in their last 10 ball games. This should be Wilson. Durham makes a. Makes an errant throw. Two down. But it looked like just going to be Taylor made. Wilson, the flip. Like Ray, maybe he didn't get a good grip on this one. You can see the ball really going off to the glove hand side of Canerico, not even close to the bag. So one of the few times this season Durham has not turned over. Yeah. Which could have been or should have been a double play. Curveball, Bobby Smith, he's single. Right back through the middle. And a reminder, don't forget about the White Sox Clubhouse in Oak Brook Center at Route 83 and 22nd Street in Oak Brook. White Sox and other Chicago sports teams merchandise, they have it all. Just dial 800 944 SOX 7 for the latest SOX gift catalog. It's the White Sox gift catalog 800 944 SOX 7. I get a lot of my money at Oak Brook Mall. Yeah, that's a good place too, that White Sox clubhouse. Real good stuff. Time is called. 0 oh 2 the count with two out here in the top of the fourth inning. A run on five hits, no errors by the Devil Rays. No runs, just one hit and one error for the Sox. Strike for Alvarez. Gap in left center. Yes. He got him right there. He'll grab some bench. Second punch out for Soraka. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Trailing one zip. That yeah, looks like you want Peru with that white goat. Oh yeah. Now that's the way to that's the way to do it. Little son with the old ball yard. I like those little pedal pushers too. Those are yeah. really nifty. I got you. a pair of those. We're built a lot of, along the same lines too. Greg Wilson leads off the Sox fourth. One nothing Tampa Bay. Greg drew a walk in the first inning. Wilson Alvarez has thrown one curveball for a strike. He's thrown a couple of change-ups for strikes. Mm -hmm. So that's like three pitches. And we're into the bottom of the fourth. As the count moves to two and up. You might be best served going up there sitting dead red. If he gets three breaking balls over, which he's not going to do. 
Grab some benches, don't worry about it. Absolutely. Well, nobody's been able to get the bat out front nope. against him on his fastball at all. Everything has been the little dorks the opposite field. And we've got some guys can turn a good fastball around. Yeah. So they'll tell you maybe they're just in between up there. The specter of the curveball and all the change in the back of their mind. If you're going to hit against Wilson Alvarez, you've got to go up there looking for his fastball because you could adjust to the other pitches. That's ball four. Go the dreaded leadoff walk. And here comes Big Frank. Frank Thomas. Wow. Tampa Bay has now walked 116 batters this year. Nobody else has gotten to 100 yet. <laughs> He's tardy on that heater. Well, you see 19 walks mm. issued to Sox hitters yesterday. Interesting. Sox have never been swept in a double hitter here at Comiskey. New Comiskey. Another fastball and the count 0-2. He's had two good pitches to hit. He's upset with himself, as he should be. Now that curveball comes into play. Yeah, well, if he bounces it up there, you know, throw it hard. You know, it's not going to be a get-me-over. This is what you'd pray for in situations like this. He's shaking to the fastball, Wimpy. Just misses the outside corner. Now let's see if he comes back and tries to dot the inside corner. I think Wilson has seen Frank hit enough hanging curveballs out of the ballpark over the years to not throw him that. Two and two. Yeah, Ricar yesterday tried to trick him on three two. Threw him a get me over breaking Ooh. ball. Frank lit him up deep. Side corner, late call a little bit by Larry Young. Frank didn't like it. Well, he comes back. I don't know if that pitch was high enough. Was it? Ooh. Here's Mags. Grounded out to David Lamb at shortstop. As all Sox fans remember, Wilson Alvarez does not have a good move to first base. And he's not a real good fielder, and sometimes he forgets to cover first. <laughs> it's a good thing Willie had a real good arm. You know? Yeah. Larry Young barking out of somebody in that dugout. I imagine it's a big hurt. Jerry Manuel trying to. And he throws him out. Oh, man. Oh, well, his ears are okay. And we'll take a look at the reason that Frank was upset. Let's see. Now, watch Flair. He's sitting up inside. And if that glove's got to go towards Frank at all, that's a close pitch. Yeah. But from up here, I thought the ball was inside. And we're sitting right behind home plate. I guess it was Joe Nasik that got. Well, I hope it was rather than yeah. Frank. Yeah. Heck. <laughs> Joe hopes so too. I 
I've never heard Joe yell. Now feel straight up. Curveball gets that one over. First time he's called a high curveball. I'm Joshua. Yeah. He's bringing it. Oh, yeah. He's in the mid 90s, I would think. Well, actually, this whole year, this is one of the best fastballs we've seen. Yeah. And certainly from a, a left hand. Another good heat. Mags checking down. So in two mags. Yeah, you, nobody can help you now. Nobody, <laughs> I don't think he's going to be giving you any signs down there at third. Is that pitch down low? <laughs> hey, the first two games. Rick Reed and Field and Culbreth in a doubleheader yesterday. Two outstanding. I thought so, yeah. They were outstanding behind that plate. Curveball high. We have seen some good umpired games this year. Very much. Yeah, we have. Jim Evans, Daryl Cousins, a lot of guys have. And probably the highest strike zone we've seen is according to the new edict. It appeared to us was Daryl Cousins. He was given a high strike. Great. And he was consistent both sides all day long. Here's a 2 2. Ooh. A pretty good. There's a roller right there. So with the count, two balls, two strikes, one out here in the bottom of the fourth. Let's pause for station identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN, Chicago. Along with the Wemperu, the Duke Meister, Big Bob, Tom Petrori, Ken Harrelson from Comiskey Park on a gorgeous afternoon here in the gorgeous city of Chicago. Fastball this should be. Bobby Smith, rack him up. So six to four to three. That is the 31st double play of the season turned by Tampa Bay. We'll go to the fifth trailing. The double raise by one. Wilson Alvarez spinning himself a one hit shutout through four innings. And he is using that blazing fastball of his. One nothing bad guys. It'll be Dave Martinez, David Lamb, and Randy Wynn. And indeed, that was not Joe Nosick to get thrown out of the ball game. That was a big hurt. Run by Larry Young. So here's Martinez had an RBI single. As he takes ball one. He's a real solid player right here. Terrific guy to have on your ball club. Yeah, Davey does all the things to help a team win. Runs well, plays good defense, great situational hitter. And in the clubhouse. Oh, yeah. Pitch out of play left side. Ellis Sox wanted to keep David Martinez. There's no question about that. They just got outbid in a huge fashion by the double raise, which I think was an excellent pickup by Tampa Bay. And you're going to have a lot of young players on your ball club on an expansion team. That's money well spent. Mm -hmm. One one pitch curveball. Now feel around to the left. Yap in right center. Broken bat pop up. 
Somebody's got to hustle. I don't think anybody can get there. It can't. So Martinez will have to get himself a new driver. And right now, let's check out our AFLAC trivia question and answer. Who holds the major league record for most home runs in a single week? We said Frank Howard, 10 home runs. Back in 19 and 68. Now, who is he with then? The Nasty Nats? Yep, my old roomie. I tell you what, he's a sight when he takes those teeth out. Ed Brinkman. Scared death Brinky out. boy, I'm telling you, when we played with Washington, Brinky just used to wear him out. He's the strongest man I have ever seen in the game of baseball. Yeah, right there. Wow. The 2-2. Two -two. Yes, he's gone. And that is out. Number one. Third strikeout for Soratka. You see Johnson setting up on the outside. Boy, just fills the glove up. Martinez can't catch up with the fastball. Here's the shortstop, David Lamb. He hit a bullet. He cannot hit the ball any harder. A line shot right to Greg Norton at third. That was a big play, too, because there was two guys in scoring position. Thank goodness it was right at him. You know, talking about Hondo, Frank Howard, there were two pet peeves he had. The first one is if you're going to be on his ball club, you're going to be his teammate. You better bust your behind. You better not loaf. You better not dog it. And number two is don't mess with his clothes. What do you mean from East Saint or Pierre Cardin? What? Ed Brinkman used to tie his pants and shirts and knots and drive him crazy. He knew who did it. Gets jammed right there. And the count two and one. You know, I tried a sport coat on one time. And I couldn't believe how yeah, it was like three is. of me could have gotten in there. You know, when we roomed together, you know, he's six eight. He was three hundred and three pounds with a thirty six inch waist. Yeah. I asked him what he weighed before the game. He says two fifty eight. He he's looks lying. skinny. Three and one. He's got to be more than that, doesn't yeah, he? His he bones weighed, weigh that he much. 258 when he was a junior in high school. <laughs> Ground ball. Peg Wilson waits on it. Now guns right over the top wow. in time. Two gone. And a reminder, May 17th, 18th, and 19th right here at Comiskey Park. It'll be the Sox. And the Cleveland Indians. That's May 17th, 18th, and 19th, right here. The Sox against the Tribe. So for tickets, dial 312831. One Sox. Two down to the leadoff hitter, Randy Wynn. Randy has slid to center and had a beautiful bunt single in the third. Went to second on the throwing area on that play, and then. Tried to steal third on the first pitch. He had the base stolen, overslid it. Norton put it on it. Change up, two and zero. Oh. Mike scuffling a little bit out there with his control, falling behind. He didn't fall behind too many Tiger hitters in his last outing when he shut Detroit out five to nothing. He was no. on top in the count, pitching inside. Well, he's been able to survive though, just giving up the one run in the second inning. So that bodes well for him. Minimize that damage. Three and zero. We're looking at Cleveland. They have a three-game winning streak now. They're 15 and five. Best record in the American League. And they're three games ahead of the Sun. High in the right field. That's a can of corn for Adonias. Mags is there. 
I don't know about the can of corn. Meanwhile, one, two, three, halfway home, one nothing Tampa Bay. On today's Discover Card Platinum Payback Playback, let us harken back to April 4th, 98, when these two teams tussled in Tampa. After a lengthy lights out, Frank Thomas went way deep in the dome. This homer was disputed after it hit the catwalk in left field. Frank almost hit the roof himself after an umpire dispute, but it stood as good. The Sox did lose this one, eight to two. Harken back and tussle in Tampa. I didn't write them, I just read them. That was Susan Evans, right out of Shakespeare. Greg Norton, Darren Jackson, Paul Canerco here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Norton looking for it, got it. Couldn't do anything with it. Greg was drilled. He was hit. Looked like right underneath the left armpit his first time up. Going to the count. Like a pretty good pitch to hit right there, Duke. Yes, it did. I think it was about thigh high, middle of the plate. Oh, boy. Close pitch. Harry Young says no, and the count one and two. Cubs now leading the fish. Four to one, hitting in the top of the seventh inning down at Pro Player Stadium. Houston five, Diamondbacks one, bottom of the seventh. In Texas, Rocky still shutting out the Cardinals six nothing, top of the seventh in St. Louis. Mets trying to come back, trailing San Diego now five to four. Padres hitting in the top of the sixth. Dodgers winding out that lead against Milwaukee six to one, L.A. top of the fourth. County Stadium. And in the American League later on, as we mentioned, Tigers take on Sweet Lou's Mariners in Seattle, Cleveland at Oakland, Kansas City at Baltimore, Texas hosts the Yankees and the Blue Jays against the Angels in Anaheim. Breaking ball. Hung that one. Boggs. Darren Jackson. Here's Darren Jackson. Wimpy's pick to click. Hit into a 6 4 3 double play. Tried to backdoor him with that hook and he missed. What is that a U1 right there that guy smoking? 36-36. Yeah. Boy, it must be nice sitting next to him. Yeah. I don't care how much that wind is gusting. That's disgusting. I love to smell cigars. Oh, I don't smoke them, but I love to smell them. Pipes, another thing. Get down. Nope. Randy Wynn, get down. That's Brandon. It looked like a jam shot. Everything's got a lot of hang time today. Yeah, nobody's put a good lick on that fastball yet. Well, I think the two guys really who have the best chance against Alvarez, if they just go up here and sit on that number one. First of all, Abbott and then Canerco. Paul Canerco has shown us he can turn a heater around middle end. His problem, though, has been they've been pitching in the middle out. Yeah, they have, haven't they? So why wouldn't a guy like Paul get on top of the plate? If he's so good inside, why doesn't he stand closer Wimpy, to the plate? I agree with you 100%. Not 97, like George. Really? Not okay. No. 100. Ooh, that's big. 
a hundred percent first time in our career I think I've ever agreed with you a hundred percent well thank you two and up yeah I mean, when you can wheel on a fastball the way Canerico can or at least the way he's shown us right because in the past they said he was weak inside so I don't know you know I uh, mentioned to you that when we first acquired him from Cincinnati I asked four friends of mine who are outstanding scouts two of them liked him two of them didn't uh huh the two that didn't said he can't handle from middle end I'll be darned the two that liked him said he's deadly in so it just goes to show you <laughs> I mean those, I think the latter four two good scouts yeah that's right yeah you know who it depends on as you look at Rick White boosting up Alvarez coming off that DL he had a inflammation in the AC joint in his left shoulder so I don't know how long he's going to go oh, Rick comes in the next inning me too there's a fastball strike in the count three and one but it goes to show you who's pitching that day and how he hit for them that particular day I'm talking about the scouts right you know may have been a left hander out there with a good slider or whatever who knows yeah so many variables in this game unless you see a guy consistently that's ball four. Whoa. Now Abbott can turn him around. Abbott might be, if you get a one pitch pitcher out there against the Sox, he might be the most dangerous hitter on our ball club. We've seen him turn Matt Anderson around on a 99 mile an hour fastball last year. We saw him turn Armando Benitez around on a 96 yes. mile an hour fastball in Baltimore, but those are just one pitch pitchers. Well, you'd have to say the same for Alvarez, who has thrown 71 pitches so far. And I don't know if Larry Rothschild has got him on a pitch count, seeing as his first time back out, but I'll tell you what, he has got a real good fastball. Well, that's probably why he's featuring it. They stay, want to stay away from the curveball a little bit. I bet you he's only thrown maybe five curveballs for strikes. Oh, yeah. 71 pitches. Max. That ball a little bit away from Abbott right there. <laughs> There's only one way to be a good fastball hitter, though. You got to look oh, for it. If you don't look for it, there's no way you can hit a fastball. Yeah, I'm going to go sit up there in the slider and I'm going to adjust to a fastball. Uh-uh, not. <laughs> that was my problem. <laughs> you can't do it. Well, it wasn't to count. Abbott got the only Sox hit. He ripped one right back through the middle. Leading off the third inning. Short lead by Canerco. He's not going anywhere. Uh -huh. And that pitch now really men, Jeffrey. Okay. Sit on this fastball and hit it out of here. When he is quiet at the plate, he can turn a 30-30 around if he's looking for it. When he's busy at the plate, he's going to foul it off to the right. And a roll. Oh, mercy. My. A bullet. Right to Boggs, and that'll retire the side. We'll go to the sixth. Still trailing one zip. Nothing Devil Rays here in the top of the sixth inning. Quentin McCracken will lead it off. He is 0 for 2. Takes the ball. He is grounded to second. He is lying hard to Norton. Rick Williams. Pitching coach on the left, son of Dick. And Willie Alvarez. They were shaking his hands, so that might be an indication. If his work is over for the day and it was if it is it was a splendid five innings no runs one hit three walks a couple of strikeouts and he just dominated Sox with the exception of Abbott Sox yes. hitters. That's 
exactly right. There's a strike in the count three and one. With that fastball. Well, Abbott can't hit the ball any harder. He just hit that bullet to Bog. Oh. Just wish he would have gotten some elevation right there. That would have been a two spot. Uh oh. So the leadoff walk, the dreaded leadoff walk. And if you're just tuning in, let's take a look at our Ford snapshot. Randy went at second base. Nobody out. Here's the throw. Now watch, he'll have the bag, but he overslides it. Norton right there. Johnny on the spot with the tag. And that's our Ford snapshot. Norton has been a busy man down at the hot corner. This is Danny Clyburn. You got to keep an eyeball on McCracken. It's four for five in stolen bases. Double Rays have 22,029 chances. Just a decent lead. Ground ball base hit. So here comes Tampa Bay. Two on, nobody out. Now you lock, Fred, lock that leadoff hitter, and chances are something bad's going to happen. Yeah. Well, it opens up the infield, too. Those middle infielders are shading towards second base, and some routine ground balls turn into base hits. Not the case right there for Clyburn. That was going to be a base hit regardless, but a lot more room to hit in. So McGriff is one for two, a single. He has scored the only run in this ball game. He's not bunting, boys. No, he's not. First pitch strike. And Jose Canseco setting this game out this afternoon. He was one for five in the doubleheader yesterday with an RBI. A stomach problem there. A muscle. As hard as he swings, it's amazing he didn't have more problems. Yeah, that's true. Watch out. Looked out. Oh, and to the count. Missed yesterday's doubleheader. So he's one of the most fun guys to watch at the plate. Those expressions. Yeah, he's fun to watch when he's hitting good or bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a How about that one he struck out? How about that look he had on his uh, face yesterday? I like to frame it. Look watch out. Watch out. Freddie almost walked right into that one. Kraken at second. Clyburn at first. Nobody out. Top of the sixth. One nothing. Tampa Bay. Yeah. ball. He'll grab some bench. And that is out number one. Beautiful hook by Soratka. Way, Mikey. Boy, this ball just keeps biting. McGriff kind of gave up on it. Boy, that certainly did have the outside corner. Do drop in right there. See, as soon as McGriff brought his hands forward, he could not. He just hoped that pitch was called a ball. Couldn't pull the trigger on it. That's going to get a lot of left handed hitters oh, right yeah. there. Here's Flaherty. He's one for two, had an infield single. Now field spread out. Ground ball. Norton. Go to the bag. Guns. And Canerco's got to come off. They get the lead, man. Two out. 
Well, you see, there's a jam shot right there. No, oh, boy. Almost let that ball play him. He was thinking from the get-go, I think, from, to go to third base. And then that it's a good job by Canerico. He actually saved a possible run right here by this throw being way off the mark. So the Sox have had a chance to turn a couple of double plays today and have not done it as that curveball to Wade Boggs misses. Boggs has flied to left and he has hit into a 6-4 fielder's choice. There's a good strike. One and one to Boggs. And once again, a reminder, our next game coming your way right here over WGN Sports will be tomorrow night. First of that four-game set and that seven-game road trip. In Medicine Field in Anaheim as that fastball misses high. Jamie Navarro, who has last two times out, thrown the ball better than we have ever seen him since he's been in a White Sox uniform. Changed his arm angle a little bit. Drop down. He's had a great slider his last outing. And he'll be opposed by the knuckleballing right-hander Steve Sparks. That's in the left field. Abbott going back. Going back at the fence. And it's a fair ball. It's off the top of the fence. Man, did that ball carry. Meanwhile, that's going to score two. And it's a 3 nothing lead. So now that double play that was not turned really jumps up and bites the Sox. Wow. That's like a routine fly ball to left field, but you never know what's going to happen with the wind. Just kept carrying and carrying. Finally, it hits off that 347 sign. Doesn't not a real good swing there by Boggs. Didn't particularly look like he drove the ball. And Abbott. Jeff is drifting a little bit. And there you see it hit it right at the sign. Of course, it's, it's really tough in the situation like this with the sun and the blue sky to get back there as quickly as possible. 3 nothing Devil Rays. Bobby Smith struck out his last time up. His first time up ripped a single right back through the middle. 2 and 0. Oh. See Jeff kind of circling the wagons right there. Wow. Boy, that wind is awfully tough on that outfield here at Comiskey. That ball as we mentioned. Carrying really well to left because the flags are blowing from right to left. Isn't that amazing? It is. Look at that. Look at this. And that ball just jumping out of here to left. It's crazy. I mean <laughs> I bet you that ball went about 30 feet farther than it was supposed to. Only one man can tell us why. Won't you? Tom Skilling. Yep. That's ball four. So the second walk issued by Soraka the second this inning. Nardi Contreras out to talk to his left hander. And while we have a moment the Coca Cola Silver and Black Pack. The kids fan club of the White Sox is back. Sox fans ages 14 and under. Who join get free White Sox tickets and cool souvenirs. Plus they can participate in non field parade. Membership is just $15. Call 312-674-5367 for a silver and black pack application. So Boggs at second. Bobby Smith at first. Two out. And here's Dave Martinez. He's one for two with an RBI. Yeah, from a hitting standpoint, the last thing you want to see when you walk into this ballpark is those flags blowing straight out. That means it's not going to carry. Figure. Yeah.
Count evens at one to Dave Martinez. Some activity. There's the right hander, Sean Lowe. Sean came in and worked the ninth inning yesterday and struck out Sereno, Smith, and DeFelice. There's a strike on the inside corner. And now Soraka on top of Martinez. One and two. Just tuning in. The big hurt Frank Thomas was ejected. So the Sox trailing by three here in the top of the sixth. Without big Frank. He was called out on a pitch in the fourth inning that I certainly thought was inside. Sure looked like it. You know, Frank's spot in the order is fourth up. Bottom half the sixth. Aced him on the outside corner. But the two run double by Boggs will go to the bottom of the six. It's three nothing Devil Ray. Three nothing bad guys here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Wilson Alvarez has indeed departed and a pitching change wimpy. Yes it is Rick White big right hander. Well, he's 2 and 0, a 193 earned run average appearing in his 12th ball game. 291 is what the league's hitting against him. Giving up 16 hits in 14 innings. Control's been pretty good with four walks and 10 strikeouts. He has given up one long one. And last year, pitch for Tampa Bay was 2 and 6, a 3 8 earned run average. He's a big guy from Springfield, Ohio. 6 foot 4, 230 pounder. And Rick is 29 years old as we speak. It'll be Johnson, Durham, and Wilson, the schedule hitters, to face Rick White. While well, we have a moment, let's check out what's going on down in the Sox farm system. Charlotte, the Knights, lost yesterday 6-2 at Mobile. Carlos Lee, Mobile, I should say. Carlos Lee was 2-4 for four with a double. Wilson Brito, 1-4 for four with a double and an RBI. Carlos Castillo is pitching very well down there. Leads the league in innings pitched and also in complete games. As Mark Johnson takes first pitch low and inside. Castillo 2-2 two two with a 3.60 ERA in 30 innings. He has 24 strikeouts. Carlos Lee hitting at 348. Chad Matola at 327. Mario Valdez at 341. Wow. There's a strike on the inside corner. At Birmingham, Joe Creedy. In my he's opinion, good. Is the best prospect we got in the organization. He's hitting at 337. A homer. He's driven in 20 in 20 ball games. That curveball misses in the count two and one. Scott Lighty hitting at 324. Five homers, 15 RBIs. Josh Paul hitting at 286. A homer. He's driven in 10. There's some guys down there striking out. Some guys too. Jason Sakata. 1 and 0 with a 2.25 ERA. 20 innings, he has 27 strikeouts. That's good. Plus, I'll tell you, we're running some pretty good pitchers out there. Some good arms, I should say. Real good pitchers, so to speak, right. at this particular point in time. That's high in the left field. Watch this. Come, Come on, cracking. Hmm. Pitching for Charlotte today at Norfolk will be a good looking young right hander Kevin Byrne. At Birmingham another good looking right hander Aaron Mayette. At Winston Salem another good looking run right hander 6 5 John Garland. And Burlington's got a double header today. They're going to send Mendoza. Aronimo Mendoza. He's 1 and 1 with a 1 8 9 ERA. In the first game and then a good looking young left hander Eric Fisher in game two. Pretty good arms. 
Marte, Kenny Williams, and his staff. They are doing an excellent job in the White Sox minor league system. Bringing these young guys along. We've got some good looking young players down there. 0 and 1 to Durham. Ray, 0 for 2. Twice he is going out to the right side. He fouled out to McGriff and he popped up today, Martinez. That's inside. Well, evidently we were told wrong. We were told <laughs> that Big Hurt was ejected. Thank goodness he's still in the ball game. It was Joe Nasek. That's good. Joe's watching the game in the clubhouse right now. There's yeah. a base hit. Got that breaking ball up. So Durham now will have to hold up as Dave Martinez quickly gets to it, fires it back into Bobby Smith. Well, right there in that sequence, Rick White made a couple of real good pitches location-wise on Ray Durham early in the count to jump ahead 0-2. Oh, and, and then on a 1-2 and two pitch, he hung a breaking ball, and Ray was all over it. Boy, his hand stayed back so nicely, recognized it right out of his hand, and ripped it in the right field. Greg Wilson, been to the plate twice. He has walked twice. Decent lead by Durham. Looks at that pitch down low. As wild as these guys have been in this, I don't, you know, White has been having pretty good control so far this season, but I might have to have Craig take a strike over here and give a Frank a shot at a three run donger. Donger? Dinger, donger. They're all the same. All it is communication. We knew what you were talking about, dude. Frank swings at 100 pound weight in the on deck circle. It's just does miss. And the count 2 and 0. Oh. 3 7 and 0 oh for the Devil Rays, 0 oh, 2 and 1 for the Sox. Now a little bigger lead by Durham. Good fastball. Rick White reached back and grabbed another five or six inches. Devil Rays with one in the second, two in the top of the sixth. Good jump and go. There's a strike on the inside corner. Two and two. Breaking ball, no. Full count to Craig Wilson. Larry Rothschild. He's going for me. Oh, yeah. That Ray takes off. Gets jammed right there. McGriff. He'll take it himself. And that is out. Number two. So Big Frank coming up. We thought he had been ejected. We were told he had been ejected. And this is why. There's a pitch. He thought it was inside.
But it was Joe Nasik. The venerable Joe Nasik. Who was ejected. So Frank 0 for 2. And a rocket foul. Got their head out there. Yes, he did. They've been throwing him consistently inside these three games. Frank just kind of pushing the bat, kind of fighting it off to the right that time. He got it out there. I love it when he comes off both feet. Yes. That back foot comes off the ground. You can... I like it when he, both feet come off the ground. <laughs> There's a base hit in right field. Here comes Ray. Martinez, he'll just get it back in as Durham scores, and it's a 3-1 ball game. RBI number 15 for the Big Hurt. He's so strong, he just muscles this ball through the hole between first and second. Sox. Bring it to within two runs. There you see it. He just catches the ball off that back hip. And in the right field, no chance for Martinez to get Durham. Mags over two twice. He's hit the ball to the shortstop. Fouls that fastball back. Breaking ball up high and the count one and one. Mags, three homers, six RBIs in that doubleheader yesterday. A little chopper and it's foul. Now he's got to dig himself out of a huge hole. That's some activity. There's the screwballing right-hander, Jim Mercier. There goes Big Frank. As he had the base stolen, but it's academic as Mags swings at a bad pitch, strikes out, but the Sox get on the board. We'll go to the seventh, trailing by two. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago White Sox and may not be reproduced nor retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago White Sox. Frank Thomas has finally gotten the Sox on the board. RBI single, the bottom half of the sixth inning. But the Devil Rays, batting in the top of the seventh, have a two-run advantage. They lead it three to one. Seven hits for the Devil Rays, three for the Sox, and the Sox have made the only error in the ball game. So for Tampa Bay, it'll be David Lamb, number nine hitter, in Larry Rothschild's lineup. He takes a fastball up and away. Lamb lined out to Norton in the second inning, and that was a big play because there was two runners in scoring position that ended the second inning. 2-0. and He also grounded out in the fifth. There's a patriotic young lady. It is Ladies' Day. Every Thursday afternoon at Comiskey Park, is Ladies' Day. So come on out, ladies. There's a grounder. Foul wide at third. 
game. I wish my son Andy and his Lincoln Memorial University teammates good luck in the playoffs this week and their conference championships. Go get them, guys. Two two pitch coming up to Lamb. He had a homer as first major league home run in the first game of the doubleheader yesterday. Switch hitter. Has that changeup taken in the dirt. Miguel Cairo is on the DL. They're good looking young second baseman. So Lamb getting some playing time. As is Bobby Smith. Kevin Stocker, who is off to a great start offensively. At shortstop, getting the afternoon off in favor of Lamb today. Outfield straight away. Rips this one foul. We got it out there this time. Now we got to start using those gloves out there, girls. There's a guy who really wanted that ball. So 3-2 pitch coming up after we get rid of that paper at home plate. Soratka with five strikeouts, although his control has not been pinpoint. There's a grounder towards second. Durham takes care of it, and there's one gone. And if you dine at any Chicagoland Pizza Hut and bring your White Sox game ticket stubs, Pizza Hut will donate 10% of your pre-tax bill to Chicago White Sox charities to support cancer research and treatment at Children's and Northwestern Memorial Hospitals. So do it. Go get that Pizza Hut. One out for Randy Wynn. Randy won for three, singled in the third. Boy, he laid down a perfect bunt. There's a grounder wide at third on the changeup. Soraka has walked just one, but his control hasn't been great. No, he has two walks. He walked two in the sixth inning. Two runs were scored in that frame by Tampa Bay. Good hook right there. Do drop in on the outside corner. So 0 and 2 the count. Win a switch hitter batting 414 right handed. And 291 overall. No, nope. fish weren't biting on that one. Mentioned earlier, Sox pitchers got a break yesterday in that double hitter. Devil Ray hitters were swinging a lot of fastballs up and out of the strike zone, a lot of pop outs. And a few strikeouts as well. Parquet and Snyder were winners yesterday in the Twilight double hitter. There's a grounder towards short. Wilson, strong throw to first, and there's two down. So before McCracken hits, let's pause for station identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN, Chicago. Back at Comiskey Park with Ken Harrelson, Tom Pachorek. We are in the top of the seventh inning, 3-1 Devil Race. As Quentin McCracken, the hitter, with two out. Saratka, first pitch, fastball strike. Yeah, Mike and that win over the Tigers was in control of that game from the get-go. He walked just one while striking out three. Five hits and was really not in trouble that often. Curveball down low. But you go back to last inning, that double play that was not turned would have gotten the Sox out of the inning and then Wade Boggs, the next hitter, two-run double. And that is the difference in this contest. Curveball, fouled at home plate. 
still hard to believe that that ball as you look at the Sox pin double barreled activity Sean Lowe and Ryan Ward still hard to believe that ball box hit though carried all the way out there off the top of the fence. Unbelievable it looked just like a pop up. That ball had to carry 30 to 40 feet extra. But that is the big blow in this ball game. Of course, Sox right handed hitters couldn't take advantage of that win with Wilson Alvarez out there. They were late on most fastballs thrown. Didn't get the ball out front. The Boggs now. 60 hits for 3,000. That's right. Here's the 2 2. Wants it inside. Fastball. Line to right field. That's a base hit. Ordonez cuts it off and will hold him to a single. So McCracken gets his first hit. He wanted that ball inside and he got it up out over the plate. Yeah, Mike's just not hitting his spots like he was last game. But he's very competitive, keeping this game in perspective, giving the Sox a chance to come back and win it. Although the Sox haven't been able to muster much of an offense today, just three hits. So Danny Clyburn singled and scored last inning is one for three. Playing for Jose Canseco, who was taken out of the second game yesterday because of some stomach problems, a strain. Stiffness in his abdomen. Well, that has been the injury of the 90s, the strange Dreaded abdomen. Abdomen Man. strain. Oh, I've never even heard of that before. You never strained an abdomen? Nope. Never it's had amazing. one. Big behind you got. Took all the pressure off of it. Oh, I see now. Yeah. Yeah. Pulls this one. Norton throws them out, and that'll do it. Nothing doing for Tampa Bay. We go to the seventh inning stretch. Sox trail by two. All right now, let's check out our Miller Lite Major League scoreboard. There you see no score in the second inning. Tigers at Seattle. No score in the first. Indians take on the A's at the Coliseum. Later on, Kansas City at Baltimore. Texas hosts the Yankees. Mendoza against Morgan. Look at Mike Morgan. Is he amazing or what? Yes. Toronto and Anaheim. Over the National League, eighth inning, 5-2 Cubs over the Fish. The final now, Astros over the D-backs, 5-2 at the Dome. In the seventh, 6-5 Mets have come back to take a lead over the Padres. 6-2, Rockies over the Cardinals. That's in the ninth. And Missouri, 10-4. Dodgers hammering the Brewers at County Stadium later on. Phillies are hosting the Reds. Montreal hosting the Giants. And Pittsburgh will take on the Braves in Atlanta. Want to see a couple of mooses? Moose scouring on the left and big miss, moose stooping on the right. Couple of dandies right there. Say two great guys. Moose Three Stubing, of, of course. One of the uh, Eddie Robinson down to the left of the screen right there. Former White Sox player. Yeah. And my general manager with the Braves. Moose Stubing, a scout. One of the top scouts in baseball for the Angels. Yes, he is. Here's Jim Masir. 263 ERA. He's got good stuff, but he's walked a lot of guys in 13 innings. Norton. Greg was hit by a pitch in the second inning. He grounded the third and the fifth. So he's 0 for 1, hitting at 278. There's that tailing fastball. Catches the outside corner. It's even at 1. Outfield straight away for Norton. Oh, there's that good screwball. I understand that's a palm ball, but it sure has the screwball action. Oh, yeah. It's a fader. Oh, a great changeup. You know, this guy throws in the low 90s, too, with that movement. He got him. Came back, catches the out inside corner. And there's one gone. Well, if he's going to hit his spots like that, we're in trouble. Jackson. 
You know, talking about Moose Stubing, the scout for the Angels, he has a distinction, distinction, I should say, that not too many people have. The guy on the right in the blue shirt. He's the only major league player playing the big leagues, never got a hit, and he's the only major league manager who never won a game. Moose couldn't catch a break. <laughs> Poor guy. That's okay. quite a distinction. Yeah, it is. You know, it's great to be known for something. There's a slider. No. One of the truly great guys in baseball right there. Moose Stubing, a great college basketball official. The WAC conference. Two and one now to Darren Jackson. Darren hitting at 382 as he stands in there. He's 0 for 2. Ground into a 6-4-3 double play in the second inning, and he flied to center field. There's a good pitch. Jeez. Hey, a little giddy up on that one. Sinker. 2-2. Two -two. Boy, they play everybody just about the same in the outfield here as he jammed them with that fastball, and he fouls it back on the screen. Paul Canerco on deck. Hopefully somebody will be on for Paul or Darren will be on when Paul gets a chance to hit one out here in the seventh inning. There's that palm ball. Oops. Hit him in foul ground. So we'll do it again at two and two. Sox hit the road after this afternoon's contest for the big A. That good palm ball. Ooh. Side of the head. In the batter's box. Oh, gosh. He got him. This one came back and caught the outside corner on the right-handed hitter. Well, he just made some terrific pitches on both Norton and DJ. Watch this one. Here's the tailing action. Starts outside and runs right back over the corner. Good call by Larry Young. Oh, yeah. That ball's right there. That's a lot of movement. Boy, for a fastball, yeah. About a 90 mile an hour fastball. So we'll see if Canerico can do something. Two out, nobody on the seventh. Once again, everybody dead straight away in the outfield as he pops this one foul. And group outings are available at Comiskey Park. For groups of 20 or more fans, groups receive excellent discounts and personalized service from White Sox sales representatives. For, call, for details, call 312-674-1000. Go out there and visit the Bertucci boys and eat like a king and queen. Prince and princess. All the above. Slider misses down and away. Looks like a slider would be about the pitch you'd want to hit off this guy. Fastball's got that great tailing action. And the palm ball is terrific off speed. The only problem with that, if he gets in a good spot... Then you got no chance. Yeah, we got three great pitches then, right? Pitch misses away. I remember really liked Masir when he was wearing that Yankee uniform. And you know, we we've seen him against our club when he has been hit, when he didn't have his good location. But for the most part, he has been impressive. Yeah. Tough to hit at. Oh my, there's a good palm ball right there. Such a differential between that and his fastball. Look at the action right oh. there. That is almost exactly like a screwball. Yeah. Just misses the outside corner. Three and two. You know, last year, Hawk, he was seven and two. Three one one ERA. Gave up only 68 hits in 84 innings with 77 strikeouts. That's pretty darn good. Yeah, they'll get you a job the next year. Huh, make you a lot of money, too. 3-2. There's a liner. Stay fair. It's going to be in the corner. Watch this guy run. Now stop right there, Paul. <laughs> Thank you very much. Two out double. Nice job by Canerico. See, that's what Paul's got to do. When they pitch him away like that, he can't turn over that top end. He's just too far away from the plate. The key right there, he kept his backside up. Now, Paul has been, most guys who pull, they will collapse a little bit their backside. 
He kept his backside up right there. Past few days, maybe the last week or ten days, so to speak. Every time he tried to go to right field, he collapsed his backside. That's where the weak ground balls come from. Yeah. Jeff Abbott takes the fastball strike from Jim Masir. So the tying run is at the plate now. Well, Jimmy with a Jeff with a solid single up the middle off Alvarez. Then he hit a bullet right at Wade Boggs. There's a palm ball grounded weakly to shortstop. Charge to throw. He's got him. Oh, a good play by Lamb, and that'll do it. Nothing for the Sox, and after seven, it's 3-1 Tampa Bay. As you check out our Southwest Airlines tail of the tape, 3-8-0 for the bad guys, 1-4-1 for the Sox. Here in the top of the eighth inning in a pitching change, it'll be the Southpaw Brian Ward coming on for Mike Sorotka. Brian Ward. There are the numbers on Brian. Making his 10th appearance. Fred McGriff will lead it off. Fred one for three a single and he has scored a run. Outfield round to the left. First pitch just off the outside corner. Fouls that one away that evens accounted one. Cleveland leading Oakland one nothing. Game in the first inning, top of the third in Seattle, Tigers and Sweet Lou's Mariners are tied at one. Rockies defeated the Cardinals six to two in St. Louis. That ball hit high in the center field. Andy Jackson back got up in that win, and you can put it on the board. Towering, towering drive by McGriff, and it's a four-one ball game. His fifth homer of the season. Well, that ball is jumping. If you can get it up. Yeah. We saw what it did to that routine fly ball to left field by Wade Boggs. And there's a the ball. It looked like he just missed this one. Just hit it hard but straight up in the air. Not so. Mm -hmm. Dead center field. But Griff is very, very strong. He got a little bit of help there. Here's Flaherty. Had an infield single. He's one for three. Dodgers leading the Brewers 10 to 4 that game in the top of the seventh. Cubs 5, Florida 2. It's in the bottom of the ninth. A 35 year old veteran. Now with 363 career homers. And one of the good guys in baseball. Yeah, he's a fine man. Well, when he first came up with the Blue Jays, <laughs> he could launch it, couldn't he? Yes. Two and two the count to John Flaherty. Tigers have just scored a run leading Seattle two to one. That's Maliki against Butch Henry. He aced him. He knew it. He'll grab some bench and that's out number one. And right now let's check out our Toyota game summary for you this afternoon. There you can see four nine and oh for Tampa Bay one four and one. For the Sox, Alvarez was just dominating five innings. One hit, two strikeouts. And Joe Nosick was ejected. That's in the fourth inning. He's a bench coach for the Sox. Our Toyota game summary. Boggs takes it up high. One for three. A two run double. He now has knocked in eight on the season. It was just a fly ball and left. Got up in that jet stream. Hit the top of the fence. It's kind of a sad day when your team's highlight is 
Joe Nasa getting ejected. You know? uh, yeah, well, yeah. That goes on your game summary. Yeah. You know you're losing. Well, not a lot of good things have happened. No, we've seen some good pitching. As opposed to yesterday. There's a chopper. Durham sets guns in time. Nice play by Ray Durham. Oh, that's got to be a tough throw. Man. Boy, what range that Ray Durham has. And he's getting this great angle here. He's making these plays in shallow right field, turning his body, make the throw. Canerco has to stretch a bit. What a great job once again by Ray. Here's Bobby Smith. He's one for two, a single and a walk. Also a strikeout. Strike on the outside corner. So the line on Mike Soraka, seven innings. Three runs earned, eight hits, two walks, had five strikeouts. Soraka struggled with his control a little bit this afternoon, but still battle him hard like he always does. Should have been out of there with just one run. That's right. It was still a quality start for Mike. Double play that was not turned. Bobby Smith in a hole one and two. Fights that pitch off. Mets have added another run leading Padres seven to five bottom of the eighth It's Shea. David Lundquist loosening up. He's gone. He'll grab some bench and that'll do it. But Fred McGriff's fifth homer of the year adds another one and we'll go to the bottom of the trailing by three. Brad McGriff's fifth homer of the year. Top half of this frame, and it's 4 1 bad guys as Jim Messier's first pitch to Mark Johnson taken for a ball. Mark is struck out. He's fly to left. There's a good fastball strike. One and one to count. Ray Durham on deck. Craig Wilson in the hole. And the big hurt, the fourth hitter this inning, is there's that palm ball vis a vis screw ball. Scott Eldred. Larry Rothschild is trying to do right now is nurse this thing along until he gets to the ninth. And Roberto Hernandez. Ball hit hard. Griff, a nice pick right there by Fred McGriff. Well, Tampa Bay's been doing everything right this afternoon, making all the plays, turning the double plays that they could, and just making the plays. Freddie McGriff, well, he's got good hands over there at first. Of course, he covers a lot of ground, too, with that six-foot-five frame. This is a good defensive ball club. They've only committed eight errors in this their 23rd game. So here's Durham. Strike on the outside corner. Ray is one for three. Scored the only Sox tally. That was in the sixth inning. Well, when you can catch it, you can keep yourself in a lot of ball games. Yeah. Pretty good pitch, didn't get it. That evens accounted one. Well, I think that was so distressing for Larry Rothschild yesterday with those 19 walks. He knows he's got a good defensive team, and heck, if you let him hit it. Chances are they're going to be at somebody and they may make some plays to get them out of the inning. There's that palm ball. And the count one and two. Well, that's a long afternoon. 19 walks. He reached back. Good fastball by Jim Masir. Started to loosen up. And 
Another good pitch by Mercier and the count evens at two. Those are good pitches even if you don't get them. Got that screwball up a little high. Durham flips it out of play. And family half price Monday is presented by the Chicago Tribune. Monday, May 10th at 7.05, the Rangers are in town, and all fans get in for half price. You can call 312 831 one Sox for information. Full count to Ray Duro. Ball four base hit, Ray. Good little one out rally going. There's a line drive right to Wade Boggs who timed it perfectly. Two down to the shortstop, Craig Wilson. Ray just kind of inside outs his fastball upstairs. Well, you're right, Boggs. Good job of timing. He doesn't have the ups like Ray Durham does, but still got the job done. Fastball strike. Craig has walked twice and grounded to McGriff. Now feel straight up. Let me mention this. Tampa Bay outfield doesn't move around a whole bunch. Man, they're playing everybody in the same exact spot. <laughs> David Lamb. Over to McGriff. Mercier does a fine job. One, two, three inning. We'll go to the ninth. Four one double red. Devil raised by three here in the top of the ninth inning. Brian Ward on the hill for the Sox in relief of Mike Soraka. He will face Dave Martinez, David Lamb, and Randy Wynn. First pitch strike. Martinez, RBI single in the second, picking up his 14th ribby. Outfield swung around to the left. Gap in right center. Norton. Even with a bag, that's into right. Ardonias, can of corn. Here's Lamb, he's 0 for 3. And here comes the skipper. Jerry Manuel, going to go to the pen. Well, Brian Ward retired the last four after giving up that home run to McGriff, the first man he faced to break in the action. And we'll be back. David Lundquist comes out to work for the Sox. That's his sixth appearance. No record of 5.68 earned run average. Opponents are batting just 250 against David so far on the season. In six and a third, he's given up six hits, a homer. Six walks and he has punched out six. So Brian Ward retires four batters working an inning and a third, but he did give up the homer to Freddie McGriff last inning. Sox trying to hold him right there and see if they can mount a charge. I imagine if it stays at three runs. Roberto Hernandez will be out to work the ninth inning. I love it when you analyze. They've lost four in a row, so Roberto probably hasn't gotten a whole lot of work lately. But Monsieur, tell you what, that guy's got some nasty stuff. You know, he can get righties and lefties out with that good moving fastball, the hard slider, and the palm ball. Well, if he's right, he's probably more effective against left-handed hitters because of that palm ball, yeah. that screwball action on the palm ball, and then he, what he's shown us this afternoon, spotting that fastball in the inside corner, that is tough to hit at. Oh, David Lamb didn't care who came in. He's a switch hitter. We mentioned he's 0 for 3. He's lined hard to Norton at third, grounded to short, and grounded to second. A 
Lindquist throws that one right on by him. And a reminder we're going to be with you three out of the next four days. Tomorrow night, Jamie Navarro against Steve Sparks from Edison Field in Anaheim on Saturday. James Baldwin against Chuck Finley. We'll have both those games for you right here over WGN Sports. And then Monday night, the finale of that four game set, John Snyder against Tim Belcher. Three out of the next four days right here on WGN Sports. Two and one the count to Lamb. Top of the third in Oakland. Cleveland still leading the Athletics. One nothing. There's a good strike. Final from Pro Player Stadium. Cubs over the Fighting Fish. Five to two. Same score. Houston over the D-backs. Rockies beat the Cardinals 6 to 2. Final from Shea. 8 5 Mets over the Padres. Is there? He's gone. He'll grab some bench, and it is out number two. Good fastball here by Lundquist. Just paints the outside corner. You see that little bit of late movement freezes the hitter. Now Soraka struck out five. And three now by the relief pitcher. So eight strikeouts Tampa Bay. But they still got that four to one advantage. Back to the top of the order. The center fielder Randy Wynn who's one for four. In case you're looking at the Sox ninth. It'll be Thomas Ordonez Norton. To face. Roberto Hernandez. Outfield around to the left. Ground ball. Canerco's got it. Picking like a bowl of cherries down there. One, two, three inning for the Sox pitching. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth in trouble. Our WGN Sports. Tail of the tape. Not good. 4 9 and 0 oh for Tampa Bay. 1 4 and 1 for the good guys. And a pitching change, Wimpy. Well, they're going to the whip. Roberto Hernandez, 0-1 on the year with a real good 2-1-9 earned run average. He has saved seven in 12 games. Just 186 is what the league is batting against Roberto. 11 strikeouts in 12 and a third. Eight hits allowed. He has walked six, given up one long, one homer. And we all know him with the fastball to be in the mid-90s. Hard slider, and he throws a split finger pitch. So a three-pitch pitcher. And when he's on his game, I'll tell you what, Roberto's about as good as it comes. It'll be the big hurt leading off. He's one for three, an RBI single. And a reminder, White Sox baseball on WGN has been produced by Susan Evans. For all the ladies out there, directed by Fillmore, Skip Ellison. Our associate producer is the mayor, Mean Joe Groob. And the executive producer of WGN Sports is Bob Borwall. Let's go, guys. Let's do something exciting. Extraordinary is what we need. First pitch strike. Cleveland now leading Oakland 2 0. Still hitting in the top of the third. That's out of play and very quickly. You count nothing in two. Well, there's two things you got to do against Roberto Hernandez. First of all, you got to sit dead red. Right. And the next thing is you got to make him throw strikes. And by that, I mean you got to make him get the ball down. Start trying to chase that high fastball. When he gets the ball down, you can turn him around. Gets the ball up, it's awful difficult to get on top of it. Hank just fights that one off. The count hangs at one and two. Now three nothing Cleveland. They're still hitting. Now 
outfield. Straight up. <laughs> I think Roger's going to make those guys move from time to time. Roger Bossard, the groundskeeper here, killing our grass. Skipper Larry Rothschild trying to see his club break a four game losing streak. Now, prior to that, they had won six in a row, which was a New mark, high water mark for the Devil Rays. This is their second year of existence. This is not a bad ball play. And he fights off a real tough pitcher's pitch right there. So the big hurt. Staying alive against Roberto Hernandez. Magley on deck. That's popped up playable right side. Fred McGriff. Fighting that win. And if you're just tuning in, make no mistake about it, that win has been a huge factor in this ball game. Blowing hard from right to left, and the ball just jumping to left. Double raise with one in the second, two in the sixth. Wind blown double by Boggs. And then McGriff homeward in the eighth. Sox picked up their tally in the sixth inning. For Mags. Good after that low fastball. Mags 0 for 3. That's in the right field. Dave Martinez, can of corn. So two down here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Here's Norton, 0 for 2. He also was hit by a pitch. First pitch strike. It appears the Sox are going to wind up this homestand with a six and two mark. In all bad. Also, Sox coming in at one eight out of their last nine. Eight out of ten. Ain't all bad. It's a real good. Good homestand. Oh yeah, that's low. Well, we're going to catch a couple of teams on this next road trip that kind of struggling. You know, the Angels have been very inconsistent in first ball. The worst record in the American League right now. Well, we're going to see in that four game set in Anaheim, Sparks, Finley, Oliveras, Belcher. That's off the end of the bat. David Bell, uh, Lamb comes in, makes a nice pickup, and this ball game is over. So Roberto Hernandez comes on, nails it down for Wilson Alvarez as the Devil Rays take the finale. Of this three game set. They win it four to one, and Whippy and I'll be back. And the totals in the finale of this three game set with Tampa Bay and this homestand. Well, the Devil Rays, four runs, nine hits, no errors. They stranded six for the Sox, one run. Four hits, one error. They left four. Alvarez, the winner. He is one and one. Soratka takes the loss. He is one and three. And credit Roberto Hernandez with his eighth save of the season. And let's check out our Miller Genuine Draft play of the game. This coming in the sixth inning with two on, two out, and Wade Boggs at the plate. Wimpy. Yeah, it looks like a routine fly ball to left field. But the wind gets a hold of it. You know how crazy these winds can be at Comiskey Park, Jeff.